Sophie Barrett, who's the programme officer, she works in my team in health influencing, and she is the girl who knows all about winter. She's been working really hard to get the winter programme off the ground. And today she's going to be talking about supporting people we went to ready and we know how important this is don't we because it's already we know it's going to be tough and if people aren't ready it's going to be very hard for them so she's going to talk about winter risks how to be prepared and resources that are available out there thank you so much leslie for that lovely introduction so um, as Leslie has already said, I'm Sophie and I'm the programme officer in the health influencing team at Age UK. And Leslie's just asked me to come um, and speak to you today about how we can support older people to be winter ready, which is obviously particularly important this winter. Um, and just to look at some of the challenges that they might be facing, but also how we can help them overcome those. So we know that winter can be an extremely challenging time for older people um, and this winter is likely to be one of the hardest ones yet. Cold weather, winter viruses, decreased socialisation and movement all contribute to adverse physical and mental health in older people, which unfortunately can lead to hospital admi ad admission, sorry, um, and unfortunately serious illness or even death for some people. So if we have a look at the trends in excess winter deaths over the last 10 years on the screen, we can see that a huge portion of those deaths are in the over 75 cohort, which is why it's particularly important that we are focusing on obviously helping everybody get through the winter, but particularly older people who are really susceptible to a lot of the concerning challenges. So what are some of the challenges for older people every winter? One is a lot of older people are living with either one or multiple long term health conditions and the winter weather impacts this one because colder weather can really make them have a lot more severe symptoms, but also because they're unlike to be getting out and about as much and engaging in physical activity. So anything from COPD, asthma, um, arthritis, all of these can be really impacted in the winter months. Lower temperatures, um, we know that Older people feel the cold a lot more, but also they are unable to regulate their temperatures as well, as much, sorry. So this puts them at an increased risk of having strokes or heart attacks that we know are more common in the winter months um, as it impacts their circulatory and heart system. We know that they're also at risk of increased risk of falls. This is one because of the kind of surfaces that they're more likely to come across. So these could be a lot more slippery or icy, um, but also because they're not moving about as much, they lose muscle strength, which can impact their balance um, and then put them at risk of falls. Loneliness, we know is a problem all year round, but particularly in winter when old people might choose to stay inside a lot more, not go out and socialize as much. Um, this can have a huge impact on their physical and mental health, including their malnutrition, which we've obviously spoken a lot about today and we really want to try and avoid. Obviously as well, in winter, we've got lots of respiratory diseases going about, which we know older people are much more susceptible to the more extreme symptoms um, and illness that these diseases can bring about. On the screen, you'll just see two quotes that um, we've had from older people just about how winter really impacts and can affect them. But we obviously hear lots of different types of quotes um, and a lot of them are quite upsetting to read. So, those are the challenges that happen every winter. What is particularly concerning about this winter? So we all know that there's an energy crisis um, and the cost of living, which impacts everybody, but this is particularly felt by older people who may not be able to, particularly a lot of older people have either a very low income already or they're unable to increase their income. A lot of them rely on pensions. So we know that they feel the cold more. We know that during winter, they're choosing to stay inside a lot more. Um, all of this is going to increase their bills and it's going to be really hard for them to finance, find extra money to finance those increased bills. We know how concerning that is because we know how cold weather can impact them. Um, and they're dealing with this alongside the fact that there is a potential for the co-circulation of flu, COVID-19 and other respiratory viruses. Um, we're already seeing potential of increased cases right now with COVID-19. And we know from the Southern Hemisphere that flu numbers, which there is a good indicator of what we might see here, might see here and flu numbers over there are, we're looking very concerning. So it's very likely that there's gonna be lots of respiratory diseases going about this winter. Um, and that's why 
as we'll go into on the next slide, a huge part of the support that we want to push is making sure everybody goes and gets vaccinated. Um, it's a really important part of helping support them this winter. And then obviously a challenge that we're all well aware of is that the health and care system is at absolute maximum capacity. Um, whilst there's winter pressures every year, we know that this year will be particularly hard. Um, and we're obviously very concerned that older people may not be able to access the support and health care that they need when they need it. If it couldn't get any worse, <laughs> it's even compounded by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which lots of people have already spoken about. Um, and I think Ruth earlier already mentioned how the activities of daily living, we're seeing, we've seen a huge decline um, in order to people and their ability to carry lots of those out. So this is some research that we carried out um, at AGK in March. And you can see that I won't read them all out, but older people in general are finding it harder to walk short distances, they're feeling less independent, finding it harder to look after themselves um, and a lot more anxious. So it's important to understand this is kind of the baseline of where they're at going into winter. So then when they've got that to deal with already and then they have any of those challenges, it's much harder for them to be resilient um, and, and to get through basically. So on a more positive note, there are things that we definitely can do to support older people this winter. Um, and this is a bit of a summary chart of what we think the main problems are, the interventions that we can take um, to help address them and the hopeful outcomes of what you can expect to be achieved if, if all of those interventions were carried out. Um, the main thing that we really want to, the main messages we really want to be pushing this winter um, is to make sure older people stay warm, so, so important. Keep hydrated and eat well, which we all know all the reasons for doing so. Have a winter ready and foolproof home. Keep moving, look after their mental health, can't forget about it, um, get vaccinated, and then also access all the financial benefits that they are entitled to. So from our research, we know that so, so many older people are not accessing all the benefits that they are eligible for and entitled to, such as um, cold weather payment, winter fuel payment. There's lots of, of things out there that can help support them in the winter. Um, it's really important that they're aware of what they're eligible for and that they go and get access to them. So. Um, we have lots of services, our local AGKs and also our advice line who do benefit checks that can help with this. Um, and then just to reiterate again, to go and get vaccinated, we know that all over 50s are entitled to a flu vaccination and also an autumn COVID booster. Um, so we must encourage as much as we can for the people to go out and get them. So just a little bit about what AGK specifically is doing. This is the Winter Health Campaign, kind of a summary of some of the bits that we're going to be doing this winter. Um, that includes sending out winter packs to all of our, I think there's 256 retail shops and 124 local AGKs. Um, we've got posters, postcards, winter wrapped up guides, which you'll see um, a preview of in the next slide. They've just got top tips of kind of some of the things we've covered. They can give them out to people, slip them through letterboxes. They're a really useful resource. Um, and the guides have got lots of information from benefits to how to stay warm. We'll be cascading Met Office weather alerts so that when there's bad weather um, predicted, we can make sure that we let all the services that look after older people know so that they can help them be prepared. We'll be using our HK Winter Hub, which is the website, media and social media to provide information and advice um, to really empower all older people with the, the guidance that they need to get through the winter. We'll be partnering with the UK Health Security Agency to send out top tip information leaflets to all of those who are receiving cold weather payment, which I think is over 800,000 people, which is great. Um, again, just about sending out that information and advice, letting them know what help is available. And then, of course, our local AGKs, who we, we can't speak of highly enough, um, they do absolutely great work down on the ground with that crisis intervention and crisis prevention work that is so essential and will be so essential to prevent hospital admissions this winter. Um, anything from checking in, befriending calls, food parcels, emergency heaters, um, they really do do fantastic work and are a huge support for older people throughout the winter. And we should also remember that obviously lots of services supporting older people this winter will also be impacted themselves by cold um, cost of living, sorry. 
So, you know, it's very important to do everything we can to help support them. And then finally, um, we'll also be supporting HK London, which is a pan London organization who run some fantastic vaccine uptake information sessions and they've got a great vaccine toolkit so um if you or anybody you know are looking to host a kind of virtual in-person vaccine information session then definitely do have a look at the toolkit which is available on their website and this is just a quick look at some of our resources this is the um top tips postcard i mentioned earlier that will be going out and a brief look at our poster we've got a um, vaccination poster and also just an AGK is here for you this winter with our advice line number. That is all. Um, thank you for listening. If you do want to download the winter wrapped up guide or the top tips postcards, I believe that they're going to be on the UK Malnutrition Awareness Week resource section of the MTF website. Um, and of course, if you've got any questions or want to get hold of more resources from us, then please do just get in touch. Thank you, Sophie. Very interesting, isn't it? And we need to make sure that we get these resources out to as many older people as possible for this year, I think. Absolutely. And yes, they will be on the M2EF website and there'll be links to um, other websites to get more information. I think the more we can do to shore up older people through this winter period, we will stop them becoming malnourished as well. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sophie.